Hello, David here. I just wanted to record a short video to uh, supplement the material from Lecture 10 on the 25th of August for probability. Just a little bit more uh, detail about the relationship between Young diagrams and partitions and uh, the proof uh, of the uh, recurrence relation for the number of partitions. So recall that uh, a partition, we want to think about putting partition is putting identical putting identical balls into identical containers so in lectures we also consider the case where we have identical balls into uh, distinguishable containers where we, we, we break down some say some urns and numbered them and put uh, balls that we couldn't tell apart into them and counted the number of ways to do that. Now, and I, I mentioned that the problem of putting um, balls into containers or urns that we couldn't tell apart is a separate issue. So this is this one. So identical containers. So for instance, we have some, uh, some containers and uh, so they're identical, so we can't tell them apart. So the order in which the containers doesn't matter now. We're not going to number the containers. And we want to, for instance, put 10 balls in. This is example 7.1. So we might say um, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, uh, 3, and 1, 2. <clears throat> so we have 10 balls in three containers. And because we don't care about telling the containers apart, all that matters is how many balls um, in each container. And so we have the freedom to order the containers, just write them down, well, the one with the most balls first and decreasing order. So we've got five, three, and two. Or we can have four, three, and three. So all that matters is that we have some container with the most and then some container with the next most, which might be the same and in decreasing order. So this is a bit like where <coughs> we talk about um, the relationship between permutations and com combinations where sometimes the order matters, say the word A, B, C, but where we don't care about the order, the order that's the same as you know, B, A, C or C, A, B. So here we don't care and so we're just going to write the containers in the most convenient order which is the most balls to the fewest balls. Okay, <coughs> so that's um, a partition. So we are we are here. We are partitioning uh, ten into three exactly three um, you know, into three groups. So another way of thinking about it is we've got ten balls: two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we just want to break it into exactly three groups. So we say one, two, three, four, five. Well, that's my first group. And first, I just mean the biggest group, and then the next group, and the third group. And I must have exactly three groups. I can't have an empty group. So this is the same as saying that uh, my containers are non-empty. Okay, so another way to represent this, which is Young diagrams, um, is to think about uh, this breakdown and stack them. So we, we take, as, as before, we always take the, the largest one first because the order of the, the, the containers it doesn't matter. We can't tell them apart. So we would say one, two, three, four, five. That's my first group. One, two, three is my second group. And one, two is the last group. So this this type of a diagram is, is known as a Ferrer's diagram, but we're not going to use that. We're actually going to use a Young diagram where we replace the dots, the, the balls, by by box, by little boxes. And we stack them all up together like little Legos. <clears throat> so we have three rows here because we have three groups. And so we have the, we have to have three, uh, three rows. So we, we know that every row has at least one uh, at least one item and then we start adding on 
So my first, my bottom row has two, my next row has three, and my top row has five. So this is called a Young diagram, where I just have a bunch of boxes in a sort of grid, and they step down like this. So I can have the same number of boxes. I don't have to have a step. I can have a, um, you know, for instance, I could have had uh, four three and three but, but i can't have lower down rows longer than higher up rows and i have to have at least one box in every single row okay so that's the young diagram so i hope it is uh <clears throat> so the the way of splitting up balls that are indistinguishable into containers that are indistinguishable is equivalent to to drawing the young diagram so we want to if we want to count this type of problem where we've split up um, identical balls in, into identical containers and count the number of ways it's possible to do this so I have 10 balls in 3 containers I want to know how many ways can I draw uh, a 10 box 3 row Young diagram and you can change this for any number of boxes with any number of rows okay so the, the general problem general problem is this. I have so how many ways can I um, place R identical uh, objects, I'm going to say balls, into n identical containers. This n identical containers. So, since placing identical balls into identical containers, this is the same as drawing Young diagrams. This is the same thing as saying how many. So each each row, let's go back up here. Each row of the Young diagram corresponds to the number of containers or the number of groups. So I have three rows here, three groups, and three containers. So and I have as many um, boxes in the Young diagram as balls. So n containers give me n rows. So how many are box um, and n row Young diagrams are there. Okay, so that's that's the general problem. <clears throat> okay, so um, the idea to build up. Now we want to we want to count how many Young diagrams there are. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. We in the, in the class you did the example um, of ten identical balls and three identical containers and found there were eight ways. So I'm going to draw out the Young diagrams and I'm going to build them up in a way that will make the proof of the recurrence relation um, uh, easier. So okay, how many ways? How many box diagrams are there? Uh, young, young diagrams are there of, of this many boxes and this many rows. We have, we call this number um, give it a good color P R N. So that's, that's some number. Uh, it may be zero, as you saw, there are some times you cannot make any because there are um, there's not enough boxes to make up the number of rows, but we won't go through those special cases. I just want to work through the example. So this is eg sort of 7.1 revisited. So we want um, the number of uh, 10 
box three row Young diagram. Okay, so first up we've got three rows. Step one, three rows. So I must start with a box in every row. Now I have seven boxes left. So I have a choice where I place them. So I can either just stick them all in the first row. So I'm going to draw that like this. So I'm just going to split up the boxes just a little bit for clarity. So now I think I still have my three boxes, but I'm just going to pull off the first row and think I'm going to stick the seven remaining boxes onto the first row. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so all on first row, and then you can glue these back together. Right. Or I could go all, uh, all uh, on, see, on first and second row, rows. So what does that look like? Now I go up. I have my first two rows where I'm going to stick the remaining seven boxes, and my third row where I'm not going to stick anything. And then what I have is I want to build here a seven box, two row Young diagram. And notice that it really does have to be a young diagram in the sense that if I, for instance, did, if I, if I didn't stick anything on the second row, then I would be in this case. So I have to stick a box on both rows. So I really do build a seven box, two row young diagram here. Um, or, so, and then I'll just leave, I'll leave, I'll come back to this. Or, so... Or I can place um, on all three rows. And I really have to put on all three rows, otherwise I'm in one of the other cases. So now I have, you know, now my, my boxes are joined back up. And then here I want to build a seven box, three row Young diagram. So here I here I built a, a seven box one row young diagram, but there's only one way to do that. So maybe I'll just say this is a seven box one row young diagram. It's kind of boring. So <clears throat> now I'm here. I think how do I build a seven box two row young diagram? So I know I have to have at least one box in every row. So uh, I would go all the way over here. So now I'm just thinking about this, these first two rows. So I have to have a, a seven box, two row young diagram. So I have to have start with two rows. And now I have five boxes left. And I can either put all the five boxes on the first row three four five or I can build so I have to have a, a seven box uh, two rows so I use my first two now I have five left now I have to build a five box two row Young diagram here. All right, <clears throat> and I'll keep keep going with this one, and I'll come back to the third option later. So, 
there's I've built that one that's a five box one row so a five box two row uh, what can I do so I have to start with first two boxes oops, first three boxes and then And then what can I do? Well, now I have to build a three box two row diagram. And there's really only one way to do that. If I, um, let's see, no, no, hang on a minute, five boxes, two rows. I have put my two things down because I start with two rows. Now I've got three left. I have to build a three box two row now, now there's exactly sorry there's actually two ways to do this. So this so this can be either um, uh, well it doesn't have to be two rows. It just has to be three boxes. Um, two boxes, two rows. Uh, well, well there's one or two rows. So to compress this, so I either have is either just three in a line. Or like this and this is the idea about how we count these things so if I start from the top level and I work my way all down the tree you get all these complicated arrangements um, and I just want to see how many have I found so far so I found one I found two I found uh, three and four so I should find four more according to this method okay so now I've, I've done all the cases where my bottom row is only one box. So here there's only one box in the bottom row. And the, second bo the second bottom row only has one box. Here I have the, the bottom uh, box is one row. Bottom, box is, uh, bottom row is one box. And here the bottom row is one box as well. And either I stick plug on this one or this one. Okay, so now, now I'm going to use the case where uh, I need to think about the bottom row having two boxes. So I start with all three boxes there for the three rows, and I now start with another three rows. Now I've got four left, so I need to build um, some uh, more, more, um, some more boxes. And do this in various ways. I could stick them all. I could stick them all here. So I've got four left. So I can stick all four there. One, two, three, four. So that's just all on the first row. Or I could stick them on the first and second row. So I've got four boxes. So I go four box two row or or I could build four boxes on three rows okay so this this one this is uh, number five so I've finished here and so four box two row what could I do I could stick them all on the first one so I could get uh, one, two so the first six I could stick them all on the first row um, oh no, I can't do that I've already done that one so I know I have to have at least one box here in the second row now I have two boxes left, so I can either put those those two boxes here, or I could put them and I have two, and I can put them like this. So this is now number six seven and so the last one how many four box three row um, 
young diagrams can I plug on the end here? Well, a moment's thought will show, well, I start with the existing bits already, and I've got three rows, so I have to start with three rows, and there's only one, there's only one left. And that's all the possible eight uh, young diagrams. So I start either with everything on the first row and then uh, no additional ones on the bottom two rows or I say uh, I can start from let's say the first column and I say now I want to plug everything on the second two rows and I must have an extra one in the second row so my second row has at least two so at least two at least two or I say I take my first column and then I say I must have at least another one on all three of the rows. So this procedure is actually how we prove the, um, <clears throat> the recurrence relation. We don't actually go count all the way down the tree. All we do is we start from the top and then we go, we count how many ways to do the second row and the second row is counting um, how many young diagrams of slightly fewer boxes there are. Okay, so let me just pause and uh, get a new new page. Okay, so we've uh, seen this way of uh, getting all the young diagrams starting from uh, building them up in a systematic way. So now we want to prove the recurrence relation. So what is the recurrence relation? Recurrence relation is as follows. So the number of ways, so let me, let me just write out um, a version of it. So this is the number of ways, so PRN. So I want to make um, uh, an R box. So this is R boxes in rows. So what is this? So this is equal to the number of ways, so it's going to be a sum. So first I have to make, um, so what I do is I, I make my first uh, column, so I must have n rows, so I make my n rows and then I have r minus n boxes left, and then I have a choice to where I stick those remaining r minus n boxes. So I can either stick them all on the first row, or, so I'm counting things, so or means plus. So, or, I could stick those remaining R minus N boxes on the first two rows to make a two row uh, Young diagram. Or, I could stick those remaining R minus N boxes on the first three rows to make an R row uh, Young diagram. And so on up to so p r minus n so i could stick them all on all the rows except the last one so that's n minus one or i could stick them on all the rows r minus n so i have n rows and i could go well i have r minus n boxes left i'm just going to make a new r minus n uh, box young diagram with n rows so this is the recurrence relation. Um, relation for the number of Young diagrams. Which is equivalent to the number of, <coughs> so, of partitions. And you know, a number of partitions in of that many um, things into that many groups. Okay, so this is this is uh, this is the recurrence relation. In the notes, it's written slightly differently, but this is how you should think about it. So, how do we prove this? Okay, so we we want to build up an R box and N row Young diagram. So we go. I can. I, I've got. Do, 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 do. I've got R. So here I have uh, n rows, and 
so when I do so to build um, such a young diagram I say okay I've got R row n rows so I have to put those down first now I have n minus R boxes left now what am I going to do with them so I either I make um, <clears throat> so once I've done this I have no choice for that and I have choices and the number of ways to continue is I say I want to make a one row young diagram with the remaining boxes or I make a two row young diagram so this giant box is just a placeholder for whatever young diagram I build and so on or dot 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 or I build an, an n row young diagram so the number of ways to build the total Young diagram is, well, I put down my first in rows, and then I count the number of ways to do each of these options. But these Young diagrams, these all use, these all use, right, I, how many, I started with R boxes, and I put down N boxes to make the N rows, all use R minus N boxes. So the number of ways to build up my overall diagram is the sum of the ways to build this diagram or this diagram or you know, and so on all the way up to this diagram but the number of ways to do this one is just the number of ways equals p uh, r minus n one so I have r minus n boxes into one row and here the number of ways is p r minus n two and so on the number of ways equals p r minus n n so some of these it might not be possible i might not have enough um i might not have have enough boxes to fill up all the all the rows in that case there's just no ways to do it and you know i stop before i get to the end but that's okay and so that's basically the proof um, of the occurrence relation uh, of the number of young diagrams or equivalently the number of partitions.